One of the big problems you have with history is that we always look back through the lens of today. And, and that's true of all of us. We all do it. And so if you can find a mechanism to help you get inside the heads of the people at the time, you'll be able to get a little better sense of looking at the world from their perspective. And primary sources really help you do that. In many ways, newspapers are the photographs of the 18th century because they provide the descriptions of what people live through. Uh, and in the same way that Matthew Brady's photographs of the Civil War provide us an image of the dead on the battlefield, the lists of wounded in the 18th century newspapers provide that kind of image because the people in the community say, all of these people died fighting in the war for us. Uh, I think the, uh, the newspapers provide that kind of image and information, and so to actually sit down and read the stories that these people were reading about the battles and the arguments with Britain would enable the students to better understand, oh, this is why the revolution happened and how it took place. I think reporting the Revolutionary War can really engage people by helping them see how newspapers helped shape the American Revolution. Because I think we don't really think of the power of words very much. And I think when you look at the various articles and pieces out of the newspapers that are included in the book, you'll see, wow, these, these articles just, you know, really got people's attention and helped push them to, to change or fight for change. And I think that uh, that can make it exciting because it personalizes the revolution by helping them get it down to a human level rather than, you know, the iconic George Washington, you know, you know crossing the Delaware kind of thing. And so I think it helps them personalize it. And so therefore that can, anytime you can personalize history, you make it more exciting for people.